Hello, my name is Rachel Goucher. I am the nurse program manager at the Immunization and Travel Clinic at Denver Health. On August 9, 2022, the FDA released an alternative administration method for the monkeypox vaccination. For individuals who are 18 years of age or older, the vaccination can now be given as a 0.1 ml interdermal dose. The recommended interval between doses is still 0 and 28 to 35 days. This approach could increase the available vaccine doses by up to five-fold as a lower volume of vaccines is needed for interdermal administration. Results from a clinical study showed that the lower interdermal volume produced the same or similar immunological response as standard subcutaneous administration. In this video, I will review 11 steps for administering an interdermal vaccine. I will demonstrate each step and then review four special considerations. For step one, perform hand hygiene before vaccine and preparation, between patients, when changing gloves, and any time that hands become soiled. I'm going to be using hand sanitizer today and ensure that I rub this all over the surfaces of both of my hands until my hands are air dried. Step two, frozen vaccine must be thawed before using. When you are removing a vial from the refrigerator, let it stand at room temperature for at least 15 minutes. At our clinic, once we have been notified that our patient has arrived to the clinic and is checking in, we take the vaccine out of the refrigerator and make note of the time. We begin to review the patient's chart, get our supplies ready to drop the vaccine. Once we have reached the 15 minute mark, we will prepare to administer the vaccine. Step three, with the vial upright, gently swirl the vaccine for 30 seconds before withdrawing a dose. Step four, examine the vaccine. It should be milky, light yellow to pale white color. Do not use if the vaccine contains other particulate matter or is discolored. Please notify your clinic manager and waste the vial according to your area's policy and procedure. Once a vial has been wasted, you will need to document this in your team's designated area for waste. Please note, one vial is equivalent to five doses of intradermal vaccine. However, most people are getting four to five doses. Step five, using a new sterile alcohol prep pad, cleanse the top of the multi-dose vaccine vial. We have found that when removing the lid, the, the sterile rubber top can be easily pulled off. Please remove the lid slowly and carefully to not damage the top and be aware of sharp metal edges. Step six, choose a 26 or 27 gauge tuberculin syringe. Needle length can be 1 4th an inch to 1 half an inch and should have a short bevel. Tuberculin syringes are used to measure and deliver a small amount of liquid for interdermal injections. Step seven, you will slowly withdraw 0.1 milliliters of Genius vaccine into the syringe. For new vials, note the date and time the vaccine was first punctured. Once the vial is punctured, you must discard after eight hours. In our clinic, we use a small piece of tape or label to note the date and time the vaccine was open and the discard time. We then adhere that to the vial. Step eight, locate and cleanse the vaccine site. Vaccination sites should be two to four inches below the antecubital fossa or elbow on the volar or palm side surface of the forearm. Special note, interdermal injections can be given to someone who has a tattoo at the injection site, but if possible, the tattoo should be avoided. The CDC's alternative dosing Guidance does also say that the upper back below the scapula may be used if the patient prefers a less visible area. Step nine, while pulling the skin taut, position the needle bevel facing upward and insert the needle at a five to 15 degree angle into the dermis. Slowly inject 0.1 milliliters interdermally. This should produce a noticeable pale elevation of the skin called a wheel. If there is no wheel present after the injection, you will need to revaccinate with 0.1 milliliters on the opposite arm or in the same arm at least two inches away from the original vaccination site. If after two attempts, there is still no wheel present, the CDC recommends the vaccination is complete. 
Step 10. An adhesive bandage may be placed over the injection site as needed. You do not need to put any pressure on the vaccine site. Step 11. Observe patients for 15 minutes after vaccination to monitor for the occurrence of immediate adverse reactions, including syncope. For patients with a history of anaphylaxis to gentamicin, ciprofloxacin, chicken, or egg protein, they should be monitored for at least 30 minutes. In our clinic, we educate the patient that they will need to remain in the waiting area for 15 or 30 minutes after vaccination to ensure that they do not have a reaction. If the patient feels fine after their waiting period, they may leave and do not need to notify staff. We have now covered all 11 steps for how to provide an interdermal vaccination. I would like to cover four special considerations. Special consideration number one, individuals under the age of 18 and those who have a history of developing keloid scars should not receive interdermal vaccination. Instead, these populations should receive the standard 0.5 ml injection of the vaccine subcutaneously. The second special consideration is that for people who have received 0.5 subcutaneous injection for their first dose, they can receive 0.1 ml interdermal for their second dose, including individuals who are 17 for their first dose and turn 18 prior to their second dose. The third special consideration is for pe people who present for their second dose while still experiencing erythema or induration at the site of their first vaccine dose. For these individuals, they should have the second dose administered interdermally in the opposite forearm. For the fourth and final special consideration, if the incorrect dosage is administered, resulting in a lower than authorized dose, such as a recipient pulls away or there is leakage from the syringe, Repeat the dose at least two inches away from the first site or ideally on the other arm. There is no minimal interval for the second dose. Please note, peak immunity for monkeypox is expected to be reached at least 14 days after the second dose of the vaccine. However, we do not know the long-term immunity attained after both doses have been administered. Please visit the CDC's website at the URL shown on the screen to review the interim guidance for monkeypox vaccination. For clinical consultation on the treatment and management of monkeypox, the National Network of STI Clinical Prevention Training offers an online clinical consultation network at www.stdccn.org with the clinical faculty responding to your requests within one to five business days. Thank you for watching this video as we reviewed the 11 steps for administration of interdermal monkeypox vaccination and the four special considerations.